I came to the United States when I was 12. And prior to that, living in Nigeria, abuse mm -hmm. was very normalized. I was told that my face was not worth looking at. And my voice was not worth being heard. My experiences made it very painful for me to look people in the eye. And I was forming scoliosis on my back because I bent my head down. And I never looked up. I realized that I was hiding my brokenness because I was just so afraid to show it to the world. You were not broken. You were injured. It's a big difference. Injury is something you can heal from. The term ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. And it actually comes from a study that was done by the CDC and Kaiser Permanente now over two decades ago, in which they asked adults about their history of 10 categories of adverse childhood experiences. And these include physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, physical or emotional neglect, or growing up in a household where a parent experienced mental illness, substance dependence, uh, incarceration, where there was parental separation or divorce, or intimate partner violence. And what they found in that big research study was that for someone with four more ACEs, their risk of heart disease was double. For stroke and cancer and liver disease and diabetes, even autoimmune disease, there's a direct, what we call a dose-response relationship between adverse childhood experiences and some of the most significant and serious health conditions that are facing Americans today. I wish my provider knew when I was 14 going to the pediatrician office and I was forming scoliosis on my back, what's happening to this girl? I would have had a different outcome. The data is clear. Early detection and early intervention improves outcomes. One of the things that I say often is that we have to put our own oxygen masks on first. <laughs> how has learning about ACEs impacted how you approach your role as a mom? I watched my father fight his ACEs. He didn't have the time to be vulnerable mm. or the resources to support these battles that he was fighting in his head, the battles that I was fighting for a while until I had access to resources, such as therapy. Because of that, that trauma was transferred over to me. This work helps you understand that intergenerational transmission of ACEs. And my understanding of that gives me more power to ensure that my son doesn't have the same ACE score that I do. It's never too late to begin healing from ACEs. ACEs are not destiny. Even if someone has experienced significant ACEs, it doesn't mean that they are absolutely going to have these negative outcomes. Recognizing our ACEs requires us to recognize our vulnerability. And that can be really scary but it also is the place where we, we get a chance to ask for what we need. I deeply believe that we can cut ACEs and toxic stress by half in one generation.